confounding how does it happen over the next few slides I'm going to talk about this I'll be talking about all these arrows that you are seeing on this slide is different directions hello everyone it's dr. Kazi Rahman here welcome to epi minutes let's start with an example is drinking coffee associated with doing well in the exam if you look at the data here it might seem that if you drink more coffee maybe you'll do you'll get better grade in your exams look at the arrow there is an association between coffee drinking and course grade now how about studying could this play any role in the association that we were observing between coffee drinking and course grade in this case studying is a third factor which actually can independently improve your course grade if course grade is the outcome then this third factor can independently cause the outcome if coffee drinking is the exposure maybe studying and coffee drinking they are related maybe if you are studying more you are drinking more coffee confounding exists when an association between an exposure and an outcome is observed as a result of the influence of a third variable in this case studying is the third variable in the example that we just discussed coffee drinking was the exposure and grades in your exam was the outcome it is a mixing of effects because of the effect of the exposure we are interested in is mixed up with the effect of some other factor in our example coffee drinking and its effect on exam grades and studying and its effect on the exam grade all these were mixed up and this is when confounding happens we are looking at an association between an exposure and outcome but there is a third factor which the effect of which gets mixed up and which might give an association which may not be true between our exposure of interest and the outcome of interest and this third variable is termed a confounding variable or confounder and this whole thing that is happening is known as confounding or confounding effect there are few general rules for confounding if x is the exposure of interest z is the outcome of interest and y is a third factor and we are saying that there is an association between x and z 
x is causing the outcome z in this case y is a confounder if y can independently cause the outcome z y is related to x and y is not on the causal pathway between x and z or uh, y is not a result of the x if all these criteria are fulfilled for y then we may say that y is a confounder or a potential confounder schematically exposure is resulting in the outcome there is an association that we observed but there could be a third variable which is mixing up in this case with the association between our exposure of interest and outcome of interest and might be giving us a result which may not be true which may be different that than the truth let's think about an example let's discuss an example where we are asking whether male gender is a risk factor for malaria we did a case control study it is actually taken from a paper published in 1999 we did a case control study there were 150 malaria cases and 150 individuals who didn't have malaria who were the controls and we found that out of 150 malaria cases 88 were males and out of 150 controls much lower number of individuals were males only 68 were males so the research question was is male gender a risk factor for malaria let's calculate odds ratio we found that the odds ratio was 1.71 that means that the odds of being male among the malaria cases was 1.7 times higher as the odds of being male among those who didn't have malaria does that mean that does that indicate that being male is a risk factor for developing malaria yeah it sounds something like that from this example now the question is was there a third factor which was the effect of which on malaria was getting mixed up with the effect of male gender on malaria could there could there be a potential confounder for this observed association how about outdoor occupation look at the arrows think about those characteristics of a potential confounder in order to answer that question whether there was a third factor or whether outdoor occupation was a potential confounder or, or was a confounder in this case we need to address two questions is working outdoors a risk factor for malaria that is the one way arrow that we saw from outdoor occupation to malaria and is male gender associated with working outdoors that was the two-way arrow that we saw if we if I go back that was the two-way arrow that we saw between the outdoor occupation and male gender now we can actually prove or we can actually examine both these questions so the first question was is working outdoors a risk factor for malaria so among the cases 150 
we found that 63 worked mostly outdoor among the controls only 18 worked mostly outdoors and we when we calculated the odds ratio we found that the odds ratio was 5.3 quite high so the odds of developing malaria among those who worked outdoor was 5.3 times higher than those than the odds of developing malaria among those who mostly worked indoor or who did not work mostly did not work outdoor now the second question was is working outdoor associated with being male think about that two-way arrow between working outdoor or outdoor occupation and being male here we are not saying that one is causing other it is just a relationship and we find that those who mostly worked outdoor 84 percent were males as compared to only 40 percent among those who mostly worked indoor that means that those who work outdoors are more likely to be male than those who work indoors so let's get back to the questions is working outdoors a risk factor for malaria yes is male gender associated with working outdoors yes so if I if we go back to this schematic drag diagram again look at the arrows our primary research question was was there any association between being male and developing malaria look at the arrow which is one way now then we thought about a third factor which is outdoor occupation and we were then thinking whether outdoor occupation could independently cause malaria that's why that one way arrow from outdoor occupation to malaria that is one of the criteria of being a confounder and then the next question was was outdoor occupation was associated with male gender or related to male gender and in our previous investigations we actually have proven that yes outdoor occupation is a risk factor for developing malaria and outdoor occupation was associated with being male that means in this case outdoor occupation was a confounder the effect of which on malaria got mixed up with the effect of being male on malaria so working outdoors may be a confounder of the observed relation between male gender and malaria but is it is there still a relationship between male gender and malaria when we account for the potential confounders in this case we are looking at just one potential confounder which is outdoor occupation so let's do a stratified analysis where we look at the association between being male and developing malaria only among those who mostly worked outdoor and the odds ratio was 1.06 which is close to one almost no relationship no association because one is the null value for a ratio measure in this case for odds ratio and if we did the same if we looked at the same association only among those who mostly worked indoor we found that the odds ratio was one that means if we summarize 
when we were looking at the crude odds ratio crude odds ratio means when we were looking at the association between just between the exposure and the outcome without considering any other potential confounder we found the crude odds ratio which was 1.7 and we were thinking maybe being male those who being male increases the odds of developing malaria 1.7 times and then when we adjusted for outdoor work we found that no the odds ratio came down to to almost towards the null value which is one that means no association so is there still a relationship between male gender and malaria when we account for potential confounders no after adjustment the odds ratio which was 1.7 the crude odds ratio it came down to one which is no association working outdoors is a confounder of the observed relation between male gender and the risk of malaria in this case when we think about confounding we also think about one more thing if there is a confounding effect that means we are actually looking at some sort of bias now is that bias away from the null or towards the null the result that the change of the effect or association that we are seeing because of that mixing of effect between the potential confounder and the exposure on the outcome is this overestimating or underestimating the association if it is away from the null that means it is overestimating it is showing a strong an association which is actually which is stronger than the actual one if it is towards the null that means we are underestimating the association so in this example it win in which direction did confounding pull the estimate of effect in the in the example that we just discussed of male gender and malaria what did you think what do you think the crude odds ratio was 1.7 and the adjusted one after adjusting for outdoor work was 1 that means it was overestimating the association when there was actually almost no association so if we summarize confounding happens when there is a mixing up of effect between the exposure and outcome and also a third factor and outcome as a result we find an association between our exposure of interest and outcome which is actually a kind of bias which is not saying the actual showing the actual association it can be an overestimation or underestimation it can be a bias away from the null or towards the null and if we look at the arrows here we i'm sure that we now understand it better than when i showed it in the first slide we can see that a potential confounder can have a few characteristics the first one is it can independently cause the outcome secondly it 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 needs to be related or associated with the exposure and it is not on the causal pathway between the exposure and outcome i'll stop here in my next part in my next discussion on confounding i'll talk about how to control for potential confounders thank you very much for staying with me